How's it going everybody? You are at the Ferris for Fitness YouTube channel and this will be episode 3 of my health myth series. Today I will be talking about low intensity cardio and if it is really more beneficial than higher intensity cardio for fat loss. So to clear one thing up and just put it out there, I'm going to be talking about clearly body composition goals, body composition defining as a decrease in body fat or an increase in, in uh, muscle mass. In other words, just a better looking physique for the most part. I'm not talking about you know athletic performance and things like that. So strictly body body composition goals. And also I want to start off with just trying to define the two uh, low intensity and high intensity. I, I won't get to like a technical definition. I think most people have a good grasp of the, the difference between the two. Low intensity cardio would be something like walking on a treadmill you know, something that your heart rate's up a little bit, you're sweating a little bit, but you could probably, you know, have a conversation with someone. You're not dying, you know. It's it's really kind of, uh, it's just kind of easy, you know. That's the that's the definition of low-intensity cardio. Again, you can look it up if you really want to get in depth. But the high-intensity cardio is pretty much the opposite of that. You know, you're really busting it. You're really shorter term, maybe like 15, 20, 25 minutes. Um, you know, you're probably not having a conversation with someone else. You know, you're really going all out is the, the best way I can define it. And then this kind of a subcategory with the high intensity cardio is high intensity interval training, which has really become popular, with, especially with things like insanity and a lot of the home workout stuff. They, they really um, promote the benefits of high intensity interval training. And that's pretty much, you know, going all out for a short period of time. And I mean all out. So like 20, 30 seconds, like a dead sprint or something. And then, you know, falling back to a recovery phase where you're you know maybe walking or even not walk, not moving at all for a few minutes and doing that so the low intensity tends to be higher in in volume for time and then the high, the, the lower sorry the lower intensity team tends to be higher in volume of time and the higher intensity tends to be a little bit shorter in time so those are the, the definitions of the two if you don't already know that I'll define one other thing for you and that is the, the definition of EP OC. Most people have probably heard of this, but they don't know the technical term of it. What it stands for is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. What that pretty much means to, to everyone else is that you're burning more calories throughout the day. You know, um, I'll, I'll get into the specifics in a second, but uh, what it really means is, you know, you hear a lot of people say, oh, it's really not the, the amount of calories you burn during the workout that's important. That's kind of where that comes from it's just the term EPOC which just means that your your body has to take in more ex your body has to take in more oxygen and do a whole bunch of things with that that I won't get into but uh, how that relates is that it ends up burning more calories throughout the day so uh, those are some definitions I just really wanted to to get out of the way and now in the video I'll try to make this as short as possible uh, give you guys the research but also um, post down below the information if you want to get more in depth because I'm trying to keep these videos informative but pretty short as well. So I want to look at uh, three different areas that you can really look at cardio and then lastly I'll just sum it up and then talk about my, my recommendations I guess. I'm, I'm not big on individual uh, suggestions or recommendations. I really just think that people should go off research but it is my YouTube channel so I should probably give some recommendations um, about cardio. So to start off, I'll talk about where I think this myth originated. The, the myth that, that low intensity cardio is going to be superior for fat loss. So when you're looking at things in a really an acute setting, so actually what's happening during the exercise, it's pretty well known that during exercise, um, when you're performing low intensity, that you're using more fat for fuel, and then as intensity increases, you're using more carbohydrate for fuel. You could, you know, even go further and to go into glycolytic systems and phosphagen systems. But just for general purposes, we'll talk about, you know, more carbohydrates are burned for fuel during high intensity, and more fat is being um, burned as intensity decreases, or however you want to look at it. So what they pretty much found in the study that I'll post below is that it. It, that fat oxidation maxed out is 63% of VO2 max. So that would, that, so they, they had one group go at 63% of their VO2 max, and another group I believe in the, somewhere around the 80s, and they found that there was no greater fat oxidation in the high intensity group, the low intensity group, 
So I think that's where that myth kind of originated that, you know, once you get to a certain point of the, your VO2 max, you're just going to switch over into burning carbohydrates. Therefore, you should just, you know, stick in the, the fat burning zone, as a lot of people um, call it. Therefore, you're only burning fat. And that's totally true. I definitely won't refute that. Um, when, you're, when you're doing low intensity cardio, assuming that you're burning the same amount of calories, so we'll make up an arbitrary number like 400. If you're doing the two types of cardio, you will definitely burn a greater percentage of the 400 calories with fat in the low intensity group. So that's the first thing I really want to look at is that a, an acute effect of the two, the two types of cardio. Again, low intensity cardio will definitely burn more fat during exercise. Now, now we'll move into part two, which is I think a little more applicable to uh, your results. And that is over a 24 hour period of time. So another study that I'll post below, they found that one group measured at a 40% VO2 max, another group measured a 70% VO2 max, that over a 24 hour period of time, they both oxidize the same amount of fat. So what that means and in, in kind of how that happened is that of course, like I said in, in the first topic, that during exercise, the low intensity group actually burned more fat. But after exercise, what I talked about in the intro of EPOC, is that the high intensity group burned more calories post exercise, which in turn, when you kind of add those differences up, at the end of the day, they both burnt the same amount of fat. So that's a, a second way of looking at it. So again, to recap, low intensity cardio during exercise was more beneficial for burning fat. And then over a 24 hour period, the high intensity groups and the low intensity groups, again, assuming that you're burning the same amount of calories during the exercise, tends to be equal for fat oxidation. So that's how it kind of stood for a while, especially myself, as far as what my recommendations are, you know, it really doesn't matter and things like that. And now I'll get into kind of the, the latter, and I think what's most important is kind of a chronic effect. You know, who really cares how much fat you're burning in an hour or two? Who should really care how many, you know, how much fat you're burning in a day or two? We really need, you know, longer term studies to really see if it's applicable to body composition and see who's actually burning more fat throughout a longer period of time. So again, the study that I'll post, it was uh, ran for 20 weeks, so it's a pretty long study. It's not even you know, a month or two, it's 20 weeks. And they found that the high intensity interval training group burned nine times more as fat than the low intensity group. You know, again, that it really comes to testament and how much the EPOC comes into play when you're talking about high intensity. You know, over a period of the day, it showed to catch up to low intensity cardio. In a period of, of 20 weeks, it showed to kind of blow it out of the water. So, in that study, it did find that high intensity interval training was superior to low intensity um, low intensity steady state cardio. Again, those are it's both assuming that equal amount of, of calories are burnt during the workout. And also, which I think is really important to, to my audience, um, especially males who, who want to get lean but not uh, lose their muscle, is the high intensity group was also found to preserve more lean body mass. So those, those are two big arguments that a lot of high intensity people will, will push. That it, is, it has been proven that high intensity interval training over a long period of time, you know, 20 weeks, will both burn more fat than the low intensity group and also preserve more lean body mass, which if you're talking about body composition is definitely your goal. So uh, I'll sum that up real quick for you guys. Hopefully that was um, in depth enough for you to really get something out of that. And also you can look at the studies if you want a little more information. But in an acute setting, like I said before, the fat oxidation is going to be uh, more in the low intensity group because you just tend to use more fat in that lower heart rate, that lower heart rate zone. And then as you increase the time period, you know, going from you know during your exercise to one hour, it tend or during your exercise to one day, it tends to even out the high intensity and the low intensity as far as fat oxidation. And then when you drag this over a longer period of time, in the study that I talked about, 20 weeks, the high intensity group outperforms the low intensity group in preservation of lean body mass and also um, fat, just overall fat loss. So uh, those are the facts guys about um, low intensity cardio and high intensity cardio. I really just think this, this myth generated with the, 
the fat burning zone because you know it is actually true that you burn more fat um, when you're at a lower heart rate and lower intensity and things like that but again it doesn't really matter when you're looking at things in a in a big picture you know looking at things in a big picture picture in general will be more beneficial than looking at you know uh, this extra the this specific exercise time or this day or this week you know you really don't make results like that you need to take a step back and look at the big picture so I think this this research that I've gone over should really help people out and lastly I'll just give some uh, my kind of my recommendations I'm not going to give you know individual recommendations as far as you should do this much or that much but I do think that it's probably best to do a mix of both of them like most things in the, the health world or the fitness world or whatever both things really have merit and I think that high intensity cardio the research has shown that it's very beneficial as far as fat loss and also preservation of lean body mass but you also have to take into toll that it's going to be more difficult to recover from high intensity cardio so I think that's where it kind of is beneficial to do a mix between a low intensity cardio and high intensity cardio so I definitely wouldn't say to neglect either of them and perform them as you wish to get your uh, body composition goals so so that's it guys um, like I said it is not true the myth has been busted that low intensity cardio is superior for fat loss than high intensity cardio and my my recommendations for most people um, again if you're if you're trying to um, have the best body composition as possible to use a mix of both of them also with weight training and proper nutrition of course so so that's the video guys hopefully you like this this episode of, of health myths I'll have uh, definitely more videos in this series coming I've gotten a pretty solid feedback from this series so check out my first two episodes about aspartame and muscle mass and if it has any effect on your metabolism. So thank you guys as always. I'll have more good stuff coming soon.